this was one of those books that if it caught you in a vulnerable moment, you might shed a tear. What's going on, everybody? Jem Mint here with today's new comic book day reviews. It's Wednesday, January 26th, and you know how we do it. Gonna go through this week's comics as spoiler-free as possible. And no, it's not a statue review. I know we got the statue on the table. We are doing a giveaway for this Captain Marvel from Sideshow's Avengers Assemble line on Whatnot later today. I'm going live at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern for Whatnot Wednesday. So make sure you guys download the app. Make sure that you follow me on there and bookmark today's sale because i'm going to give this away at the end of the stream and i got to thank collector zone for sending this through they donated this piece for the giveaway and this edition size is number one out of 2000 so how cool is that check out collectorzone.com they also have a great facebook group cantina that you can join as well and marcos we really appreciate it all right you guys let's start off with image and we're gonna go gunslinger spawn issue number four mcfarlane and booth for an amazing cover spawn books have been killing it but i think gunslinger has slowly become my favorite and this was a very nostalgic issue as well gunslinger spawn versus violator but we get a lot of explanation uh of clown and how he came back from the dead uh, from the events of spawn 300 so it was a good like overarching tying in issue amazing artwork as, as normal and just scratches the right itches man gunslinger spawn i wasn't on board with him at first but starting to to really love him Next up, we have Ice Cream Man, issue 28, with this crazy cover. I, I can't even see the creators on here. I recently got into Ice Cream Man, and I should have jumped in earlier. Every issue is a self-contained issue. It's an anthology series. This one was deep, man. This guy that studies words and the origins of words and how that leads to the truth. And he's literally on this quest, like, through the Himalayas to find the one true word. So it's pretty deep, uh... The endings are always kind of twisted and, and a little bit morbid, but it's an interesting series, man. I'm digging it. Next up, we have Stray Dogs, Dog Days, Issue 2 by Tony Fleece, Fosner, Simpson, and, Rod and Rodriguez. I like Stray Dogs 2. It feels very similar to Stray Dogs 1 so far. It's kind of like new origins of new dogs. It's very sad, man. It's They're cute on the outside, but deep within, it's kind of like a sick, twisted serial killer story it's given us more of what was so great about the first series so more of the same if you liked stray dogs one you'll like stray dogs uh the second volume ah uh, speaking of which so i like two moons this is issue nine arcudi gia giadarno nero and heisler i'm just very lost on like what the actual storyline is going on here i get that it's during this war time i get that there's these supernatural force uh forces but I, i'm just kind of a little bit lost on the plot i like the art i like when it gets violent it feels very berserkish actually when it does but yeah could just be me uh then on to the long awaited saga issue 55 fiona staples brian k vaughn after a year's hiatus uh this is kicking off the second half of the saga story and i gotta be honest it felt a little hard getting back into it i felt a little behind i've you know i've read the issues now it's been a couple of years i like this story i feel like we jumped forward in time a little bit here uh the baby the little girl feels a little bit older with some new abilities uh some new characters introduced some familiar ones come back i don't know it didn't really hook me i'm gonna keep with it uh it, it got better as the issue went on crazy gratuitous sex scene that kind of amped up the ending of the book here definitely going to keep it going i, I got to get back into the saga groove it actually took me a couple of tries to get into saga initially and I, I grew to love it and then switching to boom studios we have dark blood issue six of six the final issue by latoya morgan moises hildago ahd and allison hugh uh, I didn't really feel like we got the payoff that we wanted to with this. It became less of a superhero story, and uh, I don't know. It just wasn't really exciting anymore. Overall, not really a big fan of the series, but hey, if you liked it and it was for you, I'm happy you liked it. Let's move on to Marvel Comics, and we're going to start with Amazing Spider-Man, issue 87. Speaking of not liking, but all of a sudden, boom, I dug this issue of Spider-Man. This was a great issue of Captain America and Black Cat. Uh, getting Peter pa Peter Parker out of the hospital, give, getting him into training mode and trying to get him to become Spider-Man again. Uh, you, so they're putting the pieces together for the new creative team that's about to come on. But it was a nice, it was a fun, wholesome issue. I liked it. Then we have Devil's Reign, issue three of six. Uh, Chip Zdarsky with Chichetto and Menez. I like where they're going here. I, I like that they're aware in the story that this feels like Civil War. I feel like by them addressing the events of Civil War, kind of was like, Hey, this kind of stuff just happens in this world of comic books, right? So 
I like the aspect Luke Cage uh, running for office, trying to go against Kingpin, who's outlawed vigilantes and masks. The stuff with the Purple Man, nice revealing stuff here in this issue. Amazing artwork. It felt like a big Marvel event. And it actually tied in to some of the one-shots that you would think that you would never have to have read, like that uh, Dr. Octopus multiverse comic. Next up, we have The Death of Doctor Strange, issue 5 by McKay, Garbett, and Fabella. And I think this is the last issue. It was okay. They had a bigger reveal than I thought was the reveal from the prior issue. I'm not really sure still what that meant and how that all happened. It was a fun little kind of, hey, what if we didn't have Doctor Strange? A lot of stuff would probably go bad, right? And that's the, that's the series. So it was all right. Next up, we have Wolverine, uh, 10 Deaths of Wolverine. So I got confused last week. It's 10 Lives of Wolverine, 10 Deaths. It's kind of like Hox Pox. And it's by Benjamin Percy, uh, Frederico uh, Vincentini, Dijo Lama, and Frank Martin. And what's funny is it feels like Hox Pox. This feels like the continuation of Inferno. And I'm cool with that. It's more of a Moira McTaggart story uh, continuing right where we left off with Inferno. So that's what you're getting here. Uh, this kind of Wolverine-esque villain lurking in the background kind of also looks like Warlock from New Mutants. I don't know what's going on with that as um, Moira's currently using him as her arm. Uh, I got lost on lies. I got deaths. It made sense. Perfect uh, continuation of Inferno. Then we have Thor, issue number 21 by Donny Cates, Nick Klein, Matt Wilson. Amazing issue. I love what Donny Cates is doing. I like his big, crazy, energetic ideas. Uh, Molnir personified in godlike form uh, up against Thor and Odin. It's exciting and big in scope, and I love it. Next up, we have Black Panther, issue three, uh, guest starring the X-Men. Love this Alex Ross cover. I love to see Alex Ross do legacy characters. And what I loved about Black Panther 3 is the stuff that they did with Arako. I wanted that to matter everywhere and not just within that issue or even maybe the X-Men titles. Arako is a thing. Storm is out there. Black Panther, her relationship, a lot of great stuff in this series. There were two bonus issues, I guess, because this is like a Legacy 200 issue. I decided to skip it. I had a lot of stuff to read, but I really dug the main storyline here. Then we got X-Men issue 7 by Dugan, Laraz, and Garcia. So they fool you to really thinking this is a Captain Krokoa issue, which I'm still a little hazy on how that all happened again. But it's very much a Cyclops-driven issue, uh, kind of explaining the Captain Krokoa stuff a little bit here. Uh, and overall, a solid book. I mean, I was digging it. Artwork was fantastic. They had some really dope explosions and paneling going on in here. Strong title so far. All right, then we have Avengers Forever Issue 2 by Jason Aaron. He's joined by Neuter, Magno, Hannah, Smith, and Guru EFX. So I feel like I didn't like Issue 1, and I almost didn't read this. I love this, man. This was an insane issue of Ghost Rider being tortured the whole time by a version of Red Skull who has the Venom symbiote in a different universe. It was amazing. It was dark. It felt like a 90s battle. Like, this villain's got the hero tied up, and they're just telling them their master plan, and it's it was pretty cool, man. I dug it. Devil's Reign brings us another one-shot or mini-series within the event, Winter Soldier Issue 1 by Kelly, Lansing, Leon, and Sor, uh, Sabre Sobrero. Which was an amazing issue. It goes to show you, you can't always skip the tie-ins on these event-type books. This was an amazing Winter Soldier issue. Him wanting to steal his files uh, that the Kingpin has. You know, the Kingpin started this whole Devil's Reign thing with him going back to his files to look at Daredevil's secret identity, which he knows he paid for, but unable to, to read the paper or figure it out for some type of magical reason. So, it's funny, like, we're tying it in with those folders and with those uh, with that information that kingpin has but it was also deep it was very brew bakery i, I kind of really dug this one and i was just saying i felt like i haven't seen much of winter soldier in a while next up we have captain america iron man issue three another great alex ross cover this one's by landy unzetta and rosenberg but it's just not a strong title i mean you would think with such huge characters and such big personalities from the movies that it would be a better book but it's just not man it's just kind of boring I'm not really feeling the chemistry between them as much, although they try. The villains and the suits and the things that are are, are driving the story are just kind of like, I don't know, man. I, I wanted more from this one. And lastly, we have Mary Jane and Black Cat Beyond, issue one by Jed McKay, Sia Villa, and Eric Arseniega. The J. Scott Campbell cover, this is probably going to be a collectible issue, man, but the story is what you think it is. It's a Black Cat, Mary Jane team up. Mary Jane does stuff in here that I'm like, is Mary Jane really running down a building on rope? Like, come on, man. Like, 
I, I kind of like some bits of it where somebody notices um, Mary Jane. She's not really a big actress, but this is like a diehard fan of hers, and that's pretty funny. But overall, it's kind of a whack story that ties into ama the Amazing Spider-Man issue of this week, and I kind of like how that played out. All right, moving on to DC Comics. So I didn't get a copy of Detective 1050. Uh, my shop got shorted, so I am reading this title still but um, I wasn't able to pick that up. So let's move on over to Superman and Robin, uh, issue number one, one-shot special. This is by Tomasi, Bogdanovic, Henriquez, Hanna, Santorelli, and Placencia. And I don't know why I put it on my list to pick up. I think I saw Superman and Robin and thought it was going to be something like Jeff Lemire's Robin and Batman. It's not. It's basically a Super Sons one-shot in this era where Jonathan Kent has been aged up. Uh, Damien's still Damien. I mean, if you really loved Super Sons, maybe you would dig this book. I kind of was like, I wasted my time with it, really. It's like, it's not doing anything for me. It's just a one-shot. I'm not a huge fan of the characters of the team. I, I mean, I like Damian Wayne, but the whole team-up thing. Uh, the cover was misleading. It was much more lighthearted than it appears. Speaking of lighthearted, we have Superman 78, issue 6 of 6, the final issue by Venditti, Torres, and Bel Air. And this book just showed so much charm throughout for the whole series, and especially the way that it ended. It was so true to the source material. It felt like the true Superman, uh, Richard Donner sequel that you wish you would have got. Uh, the, the art, uh, the battle between him and Brainiac, that final battle, it was great, man. And what's funny is what happens in here felt very similar to the other Superman story. It must have been Superman and Robin from this week. All right, then we have Task Force Z, issue four. This one is by Rosenberg, Barrows, McKeown, Fiera, Vines, and Lucas. It was probably the weakest title of my poll this week. I just really wasn't digging it. Uh, the Jason Hood Batman stuff and, and kind of uh, getting information on uh, the department who put together this task force, this Suicide Squad... It was all right, man. I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit over it. All right, next up, we got The Human Target, issue number four by Tom King and Greg Swallow on DC Black Label. Man, this was a great issue. When I read this issue and I put it down, I was like, this is like adult comic books, but not, not like adult, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like mature, but it works. It's for people who are fans of comic books. The interaction between The Human Target and Ice uh, and Blue Beetle, but you're seeing their relationship kind of blossom. All while this guy's trying to find a way to, to save himself. He only has X amount of days left to live. Uh, very mature, satisfying, grown-up stuff. Man, this is grown-up books, baby. Next up, we got Wonder Girl, issue number seven by Jones, Del Dusa, and Bel Air. I believe this is the last issue of this series. It's kind of a shame. It kind of feels like they knew it wasn't going to be a long thing, and they just kind of ended it and fizzled it out. Y uh, Yara Floor uh, goes to battle with the Olympians she, to, to gain her freedom, fighting Eros. So she realizes she's been betrayed. I like the character. Uh, we, they got to find the right thing for her. The artwork was great throughout, though. Cool little seven-issue series, I guess. All right, then we have DC vs. Vampires. This is issue four out of 12 by Tiny and Rosenberg and Schmidt. It was a fun issue, man. It feels like how I felt when I read De Deceased. You know it doesn't matter. Anybody could become a vampire at any time, but it's cool when they trick us. Uh, and they, there was a great battle here between Batman and Green Arrow. I don't want to spoil it. The whole kind of concept behind the fight was great and, and besides the fight itself. So it was a fun issue. Speaking of Robin, Damian Wayne, he's got his own ongoing. It's on issue 10. It's flowing outside of the tournament, and it really works. Williamson, Cruz, Ratman, and Guerrero. I love this. The Demon's Family Tree. Big reveals on the Ray, uh, Raz Agul. Is it Raz or Raish? I grew up with the, the Batman animated series. It was Raish, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, the whole kind of Raish's mother uh, into the mix, tying it in with the soul mother, and it just feels like, man, it, they can just keep it going. It, I felt like with a tournament, it's very formulaic and it would have to have ended, but I guess I'm just really surprised that this is an ongoing series. Speaking of ongoing series, one of the longest action comics, issue 1039 by Johnson, Federici, and Luridge. So what this... Uh, issue did really well it's had like, a really good uh really great color contrast like each page would be like an entire hue like this one is like yellow and then you'll go and it'll be like an all <clears throat> an all orange page and an all green page see like here so, and, and it was all about kind of like the origins of war world and the the first war world that wasn't man-made and life underneath it and superman fighting like superman but he doesn't have superman type powers anymore so you can't be blocking with your head and taking access to the forearm so superman what i like about this is that clark kent 
is going to be able to fight like a real fighter, not just like somebody who has superpowers. All right, guys, and on to my pick of the week. Before I give it to you, make sure, whatnot, today, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, doing a giveaway as well. Shout out Collector Zone, Captain Marvel statue. Pick of the week is the Batman Catwoman special by Tom King with John Paul Leon, Bernard Chang, Sean Crystal, Mitch Gerard, and Dave Stewart. Wow. This was a great book, man. And I know not everybody is into the Batman Catwoman uh, series, which this is kind of branching out of, which I do like. This was a great one shot. Even if you haven't read any of that stuff, it basically tells the origin of Catwoman from a very young child and going through like pivotal points through the eras of her getting old, having the child with Bruce Wayne, that child becoming a vigilante and, and crime fighter as well. And it was so heartfelt. And you're watching your heroes grow old. It almost brought a tear to my eye. This was one of those books. This was one of those books that if it caught you in a vulnerable moment, you might shed a tear. Shit was the pick of the week. Gem Mint, new comic book day reviews. Thanks for watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.